friends, this is Raj Sahu again in Goa, India. Today, uh, you know, I've just started a re recently started a series where we are contrasting uh, the words of Jesus with the words of uh, the fake apostle Paul to expose who he is, to uh, highlight or underscore the huge contradiction in their and glaring contradictions between their words and teachings. So this is a method which, which we are employing as the Lord asked me to and I, I've been doing it for a while now, even more now. So this is I think the seventh addition to that, the seventh part and in this we will be contrasting the words of Jesus Christ, John 8.44 verses Paul's words in Romans 3 7 see I've explained in the past in other videos also that Bible apart from being a wonderful narrative and a message message of what love compassion righteousness truth justice that's how you get saved and become part of God's heaven that's uh, Apart from that narrative which we know about Bible, there are also clues there. There are a bunch of clues there guys, lots of clues, multiple clues. They're strewn all over uh, the narrative, Bible. As you read Bible, as you study, I would highly recommend please study, do not rely anymore on teachers. First of all, and these pastors, whoever, with due respect to them because we were deceived by this fake apostle Paul and because I have recorded 200, 300 videos, almost 300 now. I would recommend check some of these videos to understand why Paul is a deceiver because this, if I keep talking about why he is a deceiver, it takes about 20 minutes and then the video starts. So I would recommend, I will be putting links, see 3, 4, why Paul was involved in 3 crucifixions. He was a real nasty guy, the antichrist. And the other one is, apart from this, Paul and his 3 crucifixions, there is this, um, the damning confessions of the false apostle Paul that's gathered a lot of hits and also uh, Antichrist name revealed it was Paul. Those are some of the videos you can check out others so you will know why he is uh, uh, a deceiver. In fact he himself in the damning confession I have just compiled all his confessions why he was a deceiver, a cheater, a liar, this, that and that. Crafty fellow, I, Paul, am, I trapped you in by deception, he says to the Corinthians 12, 2 Corinthians 12, 16, other places he says, I'm a liar, one place he says, I robbed this church to give to this church, what kind of a bloody Robin Hood, decoit or robber is he, anyway, today we will be highlighting some, a very important verse of Jesus Christ. But before I go to that, John 8, 44, please check it out, okay? I'll be pasting as much as I can allowed in the section, description section. I would highly encourage all of you to please, please, please check out everything I share with you or anybody else. We should not get deceived. Bible is the best reference and it's the best place to go to to understand Jesus Christ and the message of other God. Start slow, read um, cover to cover, Pay a lot of attention to the words of Christ in New Testament. You will understand. You will get it. And all these deceptions will stand out as you. The more you read, you will catch the uh, the clues there, pointing at the deceiver to come. He was predicted to come. Jesus says, "Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees." He even says the doctrine Who was Paul. The Pharisees of the Pharisees, as he boasted, right? John eight forty four. Now what does John 8.44 say? Before we go there, it is important to understand to whom is Jesus addressing this. Now this is a, as usual a dialogue or an interaction not without some kind of discomfort or aggression between Pharisees and Jesus. How do we know it's with the Pharisees? Because it's written. Where is it written? In John 8.13. The Pharisees therefore said to Jesus, it's a giveaway. I mean, giveaway means it's a, it, it tells us, it exposes what's happening. It reveals this, that uh, Jesus spoke to, uh, no, beg your pardon, the Pharisees therefore said to Jesus, this is now 8.13, 30, as we approach, you should know the background. 
what is happening what is the backdrop of this situation where jesus said what he said and it is purely shocking it's just mind boggling it's awesome what i like it <laughs> i've been on paul's case since a number of years and since 3 4 years i've been recording hundreds of videos now almost 300 300 videos so i'm on this man's case since a very very long time started in 2017 so many years seven years i've been after this guy because i knew he's a deceiver and in the whole process of these chasing this deceiver i've accumulated a lot of information about him all biblical nothing in my videos you will always see one thing i do not speculate i don't uh, voice my feelings or create my thoughts or impose my thoughts it's all biblical it's all in the bible the verses tell us jesus christ revealed he is a deceiver again this will happen now but this is a real heart attack on paul so now we know who's the who is jesus talking to because at some points it point it is written what is it written jews not pharisees were jews also it's a sect of jew let me quickly define for you who are the pharisees to the unversed to the ones who have not paid attention who these pharisees pharisees without knowing who the pharisees are pharisees were a jewish sect that emerged in 150 years before jesus and promoted the idea of priestly purity of all jews belief in providence or fate and the concept of resurrection of the dead and taught that decide the commandments oral law was also passed down by moses so they said that moses uh, apart from the written law he has also given oral uh, commandments and that's where they were piling up a lot on the poor jews there were good jews also who's peter who's john who are these people who's matthew they are also jews so don't get confused jesus is calling them something you will be shocked to hear he called the pharisees so pharisees are also jews and that is who he is addressing to you have made it abundantly clear in 813 matthew is speaking to the pharisees okay and this continues this dialogue between jesus and uh, the pharisees who were like daggers out against jesus from the get go from from the beginning to the end and they plotted the death of jesus they are the ones matthew 1214 and got it executed through the sanhedrin and pushed uh, the, that pontius pilate and the Uh, govern the governor and the romans to kill jesus they were the people main people were the pharisees okay that's the backdrop so much the messiah will take from them right now i will read from you john john 8 33 john 8 so that becomes uh, smaller and quicker and it will go to uh, 30 minutes and they would like it picking up the conversation from john 8 31 they were good jews also to them he says then the then jesus said to those jews who believed in him if you abide in my word like if you live in my commandments my word you are my disciples indeed only then that's conditional like covenant is a condition remember that it's an agreement between two parties at least so he he talks very covenantal jesus which is an agreement if you then i if you then i that's covenant all right it's very legal then jesus said to those jews who believed in him in him if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free so the those guys answered some of them were pharisees we are abraham's descendant descendants and have, have never been in bondage to anyone how can you say you will make us free Jesus answered them most assuredly i say to you whoever commits sin is a slave to slave of sin and a slave does not abide in the house forever but a son slave does not but a son abides forever therefore if the son makes you free you shall be free indeed and why will how can we be free if we obey his commandments that's what he's saying you continue to abide live obey my commandments in your life and a slave does not abide in the house of forever but a son abides forever therefore if the son makes you free you shall be free indeed okay 
But there is a second side. See, Bible is multi-dimensional. There's something else he meant when he said, if you continue to abide in my word, you shall know the truth and that truth will set you free. Free from what? Apart from sin, from deception. You'll know, you'll understand in a minute. Had we read and had we obeyed Jesus, we would have known the deceiver 2000 years back. Not now, 2000 years hence. Abraham's seed and Satan, that's the headlines there. I'm reading New King James. Jesus says, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me. And these are the Pharisees we found out in 830. Not the regular Jews. He's pointing now at the Pharisees who were constantly, continually heckling him, bothering him, obstructing him and putting stumbling blocks in his ministry. I know that you are Abraham's descendants. They were. The Pharisees were. But you seek to kill me. How do we know? They plotted to kill Jesus. Where is it written? Matthew 12, 14. Because my word has no place in you. Now Jesus is having a confrontation directly with the Pharisees. They were kind of the top thug of the layers of uh, Jews. They were the te teachers and law keepers of the law and stuff like that. You know, as they typically do. And they had cast a lot of burden on the poor Jews. In fact, Jews were the victims of Pharisees. But they didn't know. Sometimes victims don't even know who they are victims of. I know that you are, Jesus is telling the Pharisees, you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me. Matthew 12, 14. Because my word has no place in you. says, you don't care for my words. But I speak what I have seen with my father. And you do what you have seen with your father. He's saying something about their father, which we will come to know shortly. Just stay with me for 10-20 minutes more, please. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. They were not doing the works of Abraham. It was like, here I am. Everything yes to father God, obedient to the bone. So Jesus is saying, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me. Second time he said, A man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. He's reminding them. Because they were saying we are Abraham's kids. Or descendants. Again Jesus says in Matthew 8.41 You do the deeds of your father. So what's he talking about Jesus? What's, who's their father? It's not Abraham obviously because they said that. The Pharisees thought he's talking about Abraham. Jesus said no I'm not talking about Abraham. But who's this father? We'll come to know. Then the Pharisees said to him we were not born of fornication. We have one father. God. So they, they got confused. Who's he talking about? Uh, we are legitimate. We are not illegitimate. Who's who's children are we what father is he talking about Jesus said to them if God were your father you would love me for I proceeded forth and came from God nor have I come of myself but he sent me God sent me what do you understand my but you do not understand my speech my words he's saying because you're not able to listen to my word you're not able to listen they were too uh, you know self obsessed and Focused on the very prideful also. Full of pride and arrogance. Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father. The devil. There you go. The cat is out of the bag. He is calling Pharisees. You are of your father. The devil. And the desires of your father. You want to do. Now he explains. He is calling them sons of devil. Keep this in mind because this is all going to be of great importance. Okay, about Paul. Why? Because he is the Pharisee of the Pharisees. And he is standing there listening to Jesus. How do we know he was there? But soon after Jesus departed, this man was described in Acts murdering Stephen or Stephen, the godly man. He was standing giving orders to the others, stone him to death. While he was guarding their clothes, that those that lynch mob or the murderous mob who was murdering Stephen, the man of God, 
of the godly angelic man. This man was there in Jerusalem, so he's there. That places him in Jerusalem. Who? Paul. What else does he say about himself? Paul revealed a lot. You have to add it. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. He says, I am the fair, I'm Pharisee of the Pharisees. Like I'm one of the most top or the essential, quintessential Pharisee. Get it guys? So let me read to you. You Pharisees are of your father the devil. He's calling them sons of... He said that twice. Uh, Matthew 3, uh, 8, 38. Matthew 8, 41. And now he's revealing in Matthew 8, 44. Directly. He's not holding his punches back now. You are of your father the devil. He's telling the Pharisees. And the desires of your father you want to do. Namely to murder me. Matthew 12, 14 reveals that. Devil was a murderer from the beginning, your father, and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it all. I will read uh, an IV translation. This, is, this was in, K, in New King James Version, NKJV. He says in the same thing, words in NIV translation, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. All right. Jesus also wants elsewhere, let your yes be a yes, and no be a no, for everything else is from the evil one. Jesus came down very hard on lying. No way, Jose, you cannot lie. Not acceptable. And whoever lies is sons of devil, he says, and will be condemned. We know that in Revelation. It says all liars will go to hell in the lake of fire. You have, we have now a bunch of evidence, right, with us. Lying is no, no lies. And he called them sons of devil. Because he was a liar and so were these guys. The lying. That's why he says you belong to your father the devil. He was a liar and a murderer. And these guys were planning to murder him. That's in Matthew 12, 14 which I read out. The Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. I'm giving you blow by blow account what happened. It was very evil. So guys, now let us contrast. He's called them sons of devil. You cannot lie. We have learned from Jesus. It's just not acceptable to him. But what does Paul say? Now comes the contrast or the juxtaposed position. He will be contrasting words of Jesus. You cannot lie with what Paul says. And that will expose Paul. Okay? Because that's how we expose. And Paul gave us abundance of chances. We didn't take them. Who's to blame them? Huh? Who's to blame then rather? We have to accept some kind of uh, responsibility, if not the blame, right? Let's contrast uh, uh, this, what he says, John 8, 44, Jesus Christ, you know, called them sons of devil. And now we know Paul is the Pharisee of Pharisees and he called them the sons of devil. That makes Paul a son of the devil. Or tell me how Paul... Pharisee of the Pharisee is not son of the devil. He is not if he is not lying. That's true. If you have that point, you're right. But uh, unfortunately for Paul, or fortunately for us, we know that he was a liar. Post, subsequent to his conversion, which is very questionable. No witnesses. I put a video. Please see that. No sane or prudent court in the world will accept Paul as an apostle. No witnesses except for his own self. And there are a bunch of other things, guys. Including the last day judgment scenario, Matthew 25, 31, 46. I won't go into that. Goats and sheep. Uh, judgment day vision, the last day vision Jesus gave. He rejected Paul's doctrine of faith by grace, through faith. Grace is a word Jesus never uttered in the Bible. Never, ever, ever. In any of the translations we have. Neither did he use faith and grace on that day of judgment. He only used one word. Works. As he taught. He wants fruit. He wants to see fruit. Fruit of what? Righteousness. What is the epitome? Zenith of all righteousness. Acts of loving kindness. I won't digress coming back but that's important for us to know. Let's contrast uh, words of Jesus that you sons of the devil 
the Pharisees because you're liars with Romans 3 7. This is what Paul says. But I won't read, please read Romans 3. This very evil, that book, Romans, is very, very evil. But if through my lie, he's now saying something very important for us to catch. So catch him, guys. Catch him, catch him. He's a deceiver. Catch him, catch him. I'm making a song out of this deceit. <laughs> but if through my lie, says Paul, God's truth abounds to his glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? Did you get that, guys? You want me to repeat that? If through my, if, but if through my lie, God's truth abounds to his glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? He's saying, if I'm lying and that lie helps to increase God's glory, how did our churches believe this crap that his lies will increase God's glory? Or wrath. <laughs> yeah, he cannot tolerate Jesus is called the truth. And here he is saying. And that if it is increasing. Paul how are you? I am going to question you. How are you increasing God's glory by lying? You turn court. I am everything to everybody he says. And a liar to the <laughs> liars. <laughs> what doctrine were you teaching? Now we know why he was teaching grace, saved by grace. He replaced Jesus with a word called grace. As simple as that. Jesus never uttered the word grace in the Bible. If he did, according to any of the translations, show me where it is. Or saved by grace. Did he save by grace on the day of judgment? He didn't. He couldn't have what he didn't teach, he won't use. Now coming back to Romans 3, 7, he's saying very clearly and he's confessing he is a bloody sinner. Who? Paul. Because he is himself saying, not me. But if through my lie, other uh, uh, versions call it falsehood, which is the same thing as lie. Opposite of truth is falsehood. But if through my falsehood, God's truth abounds, it abounds to, abounds to his glory. My truth, my lie, <laughs> sorry about that. Very sorry. But if through my falsehood, God's truth abounds to his glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? Again, I'll repeat. He's saying that if my falsehood increases the glory of God, why am I being called a sinner and condemned? That is his argument which was taken and lapped up by our churches. So therefore, guys, if you are teachers or pastors, whoever tells you, this verse then you say there is no excuse because all liars were condemned in revelation book of revelation liars cowards and uh, those who were practicing sorcery those kind of people murderers they were put in the same bracket and they were put dumped into the lake of fire so liars are not accepted what about this john 8 44 jesus calls them the sons of devil what proof do we want apart from this guys so here you have uh, the words of Jesus, John 8, 44, where he calls them sons of devil. Paul was standing right there, right there. He was the most murderous, most belligerent, most brutal Pharisee. We know that from his acts of murder, of persecution, of all blaspheming God. He was standing there and Jesus called him, what? You son of a devil, son of the devil, not a devil. You son of devil. He's also included. He was standing. That's another huge clue. And we know how Romans 3, 7 is clinching evidence to me. When he's himself confessing lie and he's trying to justify his lie. Paul, there is no justification. Jesus is not going to accept lies. Even if it increases glory. First of all, I fail to understand how will it increase the glory of God. What did you lie about God? Just to get more people into the fold through lies? That's what has happened to our churches. We sold the lies of Paul 
saved by grace through faith and not by works lest no man may boast Ephesians 2 8 9 this was rejected this doctrine was never propounded expounded or taught by Jesus and it was therefore rejected on the day of judgment Matthew 25 31 46 read with Revelation 20 11, 15 we just don't have that truth with us now you guys you know that's how we are trying to nail this false apostle again a request to all of you I'm trying to uh, share some uh, the ones I have missed out there are a lot of these you know, Paul so if you know something where there is a direct contradiction in Jesus and Paul and you wouldn't like to uh, record something on the video yourself you are welcome to tell me I'm like your servant because I'm a servant of the Lord I will serve you like record it and credit it to you I've done three four of those I will do it over a period of time just give me time I will accommodate everybody but I will vet it I will see to it that it all adds up matches and I'll study it and then if it's okay there is a direct con like a flagrant contradiction like in this case John 8 44 Romans 3 7 I will certainly put it on uh, YouTube and credit it to you see the effort here is collective effort we are a team team of Jesus here to expose Paul for what go after Paul no we want Jesus to be taught that's the objective that's the purpose this man is obscuring Paul, uh, Jesus Christ Paul is obscuring Jesus Christ is not allowing us to learn from Jesus because we are getting caught in that web of Paul we cannot transcend or get out of that we end up teaching only Paul in all the churches all of them almost Jesus is almost not there so this is an effort once we keep hammering this in the nail finally one day the larger churches prayerfully will acknowledge we were deceived and we will be teaching Jesus Christ our Lord in all his glory, his pristine doctrine of salvation, which is dramatically different than that of Paul. Thank you very much for watching my video, guys. I wish a lot of, I mean, I pray a lot of blessings on your family and on yourself. God bless you. Bye for now.